Welcome to this week's Money Metals Podcast, helping gold and silver investors during these treacherous times. Now, here's this week's market wrap with commentary and analysis from the company voted 2015's Precious Metals Dealer of the Year in the U.S., Money Metals Exchange. Welcome to this week's Market Wrap Podcast. I'm Mike Leeson. Coming up, Craig Hemke of the TF Metals Report joins me. Craig speaks out on the technical situation for the metals, whether or not the economy is headed towards a recession, and reveals something that could ultimately break the paper markets for gold and silver and get us back to free and fair pricing for the precious metals. Make sure you stick around for a tremendous interview with Craig Hemke coming up after this week's market update. Precious metals markets got a boost following the Federal Reserve's interest rate decision on Wednesday. As expected, the Fed raised its benchmark rate by a quarter point. Fed Chair Janet Yellen also recommitted to the idea of gradual rate hikes. That helped reassure investors who had feared an accelerated path might be in store. Yellen's statements suggested that two or three more hikes will be likely this year rather than the four or five at your gold as some hawks Eiling called for. Investors breathed a sigh of relief on Wednesday as metals, stocks, and bonds all rallied strongly. The biggest standouts were the gold mining stocks. The GDXJ, Junior Gold Stocks ETF, surged more than 11% on the day. Speculative money piling back into this high-risk space bodes well for the gold and silver markets. Gold prices found support around the $1,200 level midweek and currently come in at $1,230 an ounce. That's good for a 2% gain on the week. Turning to silver, the white metal shows a weekly gain of 1.8% to trade at $17.39 per ounce. Platinum and palladium are up 1.9% and 4.1% respectively this week. Be sure to stick around for some key technical levels that my guest this week is looking for. So can precious metals investors look forward to a spring rally? Much will depend on whether public optimism toward the Donald Trump economy stays elevated. If it does, then metals markets will struggle to attract safe haven buying. However, the new president's honeymoon period could be coming to an end as federal judges, deep state bureaucrats, and a divided Congress threaten to thwart his policy agenda. The stock market's impressive rise since Trump's election win has been premised on the hope that he would usher in major regulatory reforms, tax cuts, and the repeal of Obamacare. Corporations are getting some regulatory relief at the administrative level, but the prospects for a fundamentally new health care system and major tax cuts are diminishing. Congressman Paul Ryan's health care bill has been roundly criticized by conservatives for being little more than an Obamacare makeover. At the same time, President Trump's budget proposal has been declared dead on arrival by big government Republicans, including Senator Lindsey Graham. Trump wants to boost military spending by more than $50 billion and offset it with cuts in domestic agencies and foreign aid. Lindsey Graham and John McCain are up in arms over the prospect of less funding for their foreign interventionist projects. Democrats, meanwhile, are screaming bloody murder over the National Endowment for the Arts being put on the budgetary chopping block. Even if Trump could somehow use his powers of persuasion to push all his proposed cuts through a resistant Congress, the rest of his spending would still produce a near $500 billion budget deficit. The last Republican president to propose significant budget cuts was Ronald Reagan. He talked a lot about downsizing Washington, but that never actually happened. Most of Reagan's proposed agency cuts went nowhere in Congress. He got the ramped up defense spending he wanted, and to some extent, he got the tax cuts he wanted. But President Reagan ended up presiding over growing federal budgets and expanding deficits. The same happened under George W. Bush's watch, even during years when he had a Republican-controlled Congress by his side. Could things be different this time around? Possibly, but it's doubtful. Regardless of the partisan breakdown in Congress, there appears to be majority support for more overall spending and more borrowing. Congress will once again have to raise the debt ceiling. There could be a battle over that in the weeks ahead that could rattle markets. But the real trouble will come when the economy dips into recession and federal revenues shrink. Trump inherited an unusual so-called recovery that is both one of the weakest and longest in U.S. history. It would be unprecedented if the economy got through Trump's entire first term without turning down. 
The response from the Federal Reserve to a recession would be to cut interest rates back to zero or even below zero and to re-engage quantitative easing on a massive scale. At that point, many investors who are now all in on stocks will reacquaint themselves with gold as a safe haven. Those who buy their gold and their silver now, before the next big rush into precious metals, won't have to chase rising prices. Retail bullion demand has been soft in recent months, with premiums on popular gold and silver products low across the board, meaning for now, it's a buyer's market. Well now, without further delay, let's get right to this week's exclusive interview. It is my privilege now to welcome in Craig Hemke of the TF Metals Report. Craig runs one of the most highly respected and well-known blogs in the industry and has been covering the precious metals for close to a decade now. And he puts out some of the best analysis on banking schemes, the flaws of Keynesian economics, and evidence of manipulation in the gold and silver markets. Craig, it's uh, great to have you back, and thanks for joining us again today. And how are you? Mike, I'm fine, thank you. It's always a pleasure, and I appreciate the invitation. Well, I, I know time is short here, so we'll get right into it. Uh, first off, we've been seeing a decent little correction in the metals over the last few weeks, although they're rallying a bit here today, and now that the Fed decision is out, as we're talking on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, but gold and silver were probably due for a pullback after a very strong first eight or nine weeks of the year. Uh, so how do things look, technically speaking here, Craig, after this uh, recent pause in the uptrend? Uh, do you think we're still in the midst of a bull run, and, and has this just been a, a healthy Correction, how do you see things here? Well, uh, I guess the biggest picture possible, we pulled back these last couple of weeks once it became obvious that the Fed was going to hike rates again. And we pulled back in a manner very similar to what we saw in November of 2015 and November of 2016 before the previous two rate hikes. And now here we are in the, in the hours immediately following the hike, we're rallying. Now, the last two rate hikes that came in December of 15 and de December of 16, gold bottomed the very next day and began to rally uh, quite strongly. And now here we apparently bottomed uh, earlier today and are rallying quite strongly this afternoon as uh, Mother is just slaughtering the dollar bulls with all of her press conference and everything else. We pulled back again, as you might expect, to just kind of a, a lack of bids the last two weeks ahead of this rate hike. Uh, but it's but that's all right. Uh, if we have turned, we've put in a third higher low. If you want to think that the the ultimate low is back in December of 15 at uh, 1060, we bottomed 1130 last December, and we may have just bottomed now at 1196, something like that. These last couple of days, if that's the case, and we can now move to uh, higher highs than what we were a couple of weeks ago, something up north of 1260. People are going to start getting really excited from a technical standpoint. Both gold and silver have recently seen a bullish cross of their both their moving their 50-day moving averages up through their 100-day moving averages. So that's pretty important. And if price now can get above that 50-day, and we're making a run at it here on Wednesday, uh, if we can get above there, close there on Friday, there's going to be a lot of folks are getting will start getting very interested in the metals from a technical standpoint. Uh, Craig, you regularly discuss just how manipulated and phony the gold and silver future markets are. Uh, you've been doing that for years. People called you out as a conspiracy theorist for it. Uh, for some reason, just lots of folks couldn't accept the notion that uh, banks employ a combination of crooked traders and high-frequency trading machines to dominate these exchanges. Uh, now, in recent months, however, we've seen smoking gun evidence in the form of documents and recordings from Deutsche Bank where traders working at various banks colluded with one another to rig markets and, and cheat their own clients. And WikiLeaks published a memo sent to the Treasury Department before the future exchanges were launched in the early 70s. Officials were clear regarding their intent for those exchanges. They sought to create enormous price volatility and to discourage physical ownership of, of the metal, and, and they've succeeded. Uh, we can be pretty sure that the bought and paid for regulators will manage somehow to ignore the evidence and fail once again to hold any bank to account. But what Deutsche Bank has agreed to pay roughly $100 million in damages, and, and other banks involved could be in even bigger trouble. Uh, so my question is uh, whether you have gotten any apologies from the people who labeled you as crazy for talking about manipulation, and then uh, give us your thoughts on these revelations. Can the civil courts help us get to more honest markets, and is there any fixing this broken and rigged system, Craig? Yeah, I tell you, it, uh, no, I haven't gotten any apologies, Mike. I guess we should start there, and I'm not expecting any. 
And that, but that doesn't matter. Uh, most of those folks that uh, that always claim that the gold and silver paper markets were free and fair were just simply trolls for the establishment. I remember one guy in particular was a particularly virulent troll, and, and he admitted to being a former Deutsche Bank trader. Okay, well, you can connect the dots there, right? Look, none of this is surprising, and, and obviously it's nice to know, as we've always said, it's conspiracy fact, historical fact, not some kind of whacked out conspiracy theory. But nonetheless, it's the market that we have to deal with for now, where this trading of these paper derivatives is somehow allowed to uh, discover a physical price. I mean, it's it's nonsense. It's a fraud. It's a sham. Uh, and until those paper markets break because they don't have the physical to deliver into the demand, it's it's pretty much what we're stuck with. Where this Where this all goes from here in terms of the manipulation is we have to let the process play out. You know, when this news first broke, heck, it's almost a whole year ago, Mike. I mean, it was back in, what, April and May last year when we when we learned that Deutsche Bank was being pressured by the German regulator Baffin to settle. A lot of folks thought that, that was going to change things overnight. No, it, it, it's not going to change things overnight, but it is a huge change because in all of the history of class action lawsuits, alleging price manipulation and seeking damages, they've all been thrown out by the courts before we could ever get to the process of legal discovery. Well, not only do we have, are we moving forward on legal discovery for the first time, Mike, there are now going to be countless new lawsuits to join as information comes out. The, the emails and the text messages that you referenced came out through the discovery process. That's going to bring even more lawsuits. And then additionally, we've got a a bank, one of the major players in the uh, manipulation, Deutsche Bank, who has essentially turned state's evidence that is singing like a mafia you know, songbird, a mafia informant providing uh, information. So uh, people have to let this play out. These legal processes never move too quickly. But this is some serious blood in the water. And it, uh, if nothing else, if the physical demand doesn't break the paper markets, I'm, I'm pretty confident that this whole legal process eventually will. Speaking of manipulators, the FOMC just made their announcement. Uh, we had a, a bit of a respite as markets stopped obsessing quite so much about Fed policy for a few months following Trump's election. But Janet Yellen and the FOMC are, are back in the news today. And and we may see uh, some renewed focus on, on what to expect from our central planners going forward. Now, Trump and some of his surrogates have been critical of the strong dollar, but the Fed is is hiking rates and, and pushing the dollar even higher, this despite the fact that the economic growth estimates keep being revised lower. Is there a conflict brewing between the president and the Fed? Are Janet Yellen and other bankers working to undermine Trump, perhaps, by withdrawing stimulus and, and throwing a wrench into the equity and bond markets? Or is is this simply just to preserve what little credibility they have left by delivering some hikes instead of just jawboning? Give us your thoughts there, and, and do you have any guesses about where the Fed funds rate might be, say, a year from now? Well, it, it, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? And the latest uh, first quarter uh, of this year guess that's been put out by the Atlanta Fed, which is always about the most accurate in trying to predict where GDP is, the latest guess came out earlier today, and it's only it's actually under one percent. It's only 0.9 percent, if you want to call, call that growth. That gentleman that does that model actually had it at 3.4 percent just six weeks ago. So you can see the trend here. After all of last year came in at just 1.6 percent, we're going to begin this year at 0.9. And into that environment, Mother Felon has now hiked twice in 90 days, and you know those are the these three rate hikes are the first ones we've seen in almost ten years. It doesn't make any sense, and it it kind of underlies what is really going on there. People think that the Federal Reserve is part of the federal government. It's not, and people think that the Federal Reserve is some altruistic, benevolent organization that trying to help the American people. It's not. Their primary goal is to help their banks. Hiking rates into a flat economy does nothing for the average American, but it does help the banks, which is why they're doing it. Going forward, Mother said today, and, and all of the FOMC said today, that they think GDP for all of 2017 is going to be 3%. Well, here's the problem with that, Mike. If we do come in in quarter one at just 1%, and again, the latest guess is 0.9, that means the next three quarters of this year are going to have to average 3.7%, average 3.7%. 
just to get Mother's 3% target. I mean, do you think that's going to happen, my friend? <laughs> no. Uh, and I'll give you one more problem that this is happening. Uh, we've always maintained that the Fed cannot raise rates because of what would it do to the American fiscal situation, the debt and the deficit. Well, Mother is raising the short end. But what isn't happening, and this is what we've always contended, is you can't move the long end up because of what it will do to blow out the deficit and the debt. And that's exactly what we're seeing. The yield curve is flattening. The, the spread between the two-year note and the 10-year note is under 120 basis points. This is a terrible sign for the U.S. economy. So, yeah, uh, where is this going to go? A mother's going to be cutting rates in 2018, if not by the end of this year, not hiking them, simply because they are inducing recession that, that may have already begun. So it's, this is going to be quite a wild ride as we go through this year, not the easy, predictable rising interest rates and stronger dollar that so many predicted uh, just three months ago. If we do get that about face when it comes to interest rates, you got to think that's going to be very bullish for gold. Negative real interest rates, of course, would be a fantastic thing for the yellow metal. Would you agree? Always has been in the past, Mike. That's always been something. But more importantly, what I watch on the day, on a daily basis is the dollar yen, which is the, you know, the, the forex pair trade of the, the value of the U.S. dollar and yen or vice versa. That seems to be the key driver of the HFT trading machines that dominate the COMEX uh, paper market. The dollar yen clearly peaked out with a double top back in December and into early January, and has been a downtrend since. That's what has helped to drive algo demand for paper gold so far this year. That thing rolls back over and heads back down from, oh, currently it's around 113 and a half. If it heads back down to 100, which is where it was last July, then you're going to see uh, COMEX gold go back to you know near 1400, where it was last July. They may not be able to contain it at that point. It's, it, again, I, for me, I, I've been preaching to people on my site not to buy this, uh, what we call the generally accepted narrative for 2017. There's so many people talking about how the bond bubble is about to burst. You know, the 35-year bond bubble is finally going to burst. And it was supposedly a fait accompli. In fact, I saw a chart just last weekend that showed there was record net short position of hedge funds in the treasury market. Well, man, it never works. When everybody's on the same side of the trade, it never goes that direction. And again, that's what we're seeing right now. The long end, the 10-year note, and the 30-year long bond are actually lower in yield than they were 90 days ago, while the Fed has jacked up the short end. Again, that's a flattening of the yield curve. Anybody that's ever taken Econ 101 in college knows that a flat yield curve is a precursor of recession and I just have very little doubt at this point that that's where we're headed. Well, as we begin to close here, Craig, I'm curious what the people in your community at TF Metals are talking about these days, uh, because there's certainly plenty going on in the world. We've we've got some important elections coming up in Europe. Uh, there's a big story coming out of Washington, D.C. nearly every day. WikiLeaks plans to keep dropping new evidence of overreach and corruption. Meanwhile, stock markets just keep pushing higher and appears to be well into bubble territory and ripe for a big fall. Uh, but what events are you and your members uh, focused on in the coming months? Well, most folks at, at TFMR are general, aggressive stackers of physical metal, whether it's gold or silver, buying on a regular basis and just simply adding to their stack in preparation for this great economic uh, financial reset that's eventually going to come because the debt just can't simply keep going parabolically higher without either having to be reset or you know debt jubilee or whatever. So we all stack metal and take advantage of the lower prices when they come. A lot of folks are trading the miners as well for leverage. And so folks have been very concerned, I can tell you that, over the way the miners have performed in the last three weeks. But they're up today too, and they may very well have put in their own higher low on the chart. And so folks are excited about that. Eventually, we're really watching... We're going to be watching, paying very close attention to what Theresa May does over the next couple of weeks in England regarding Brexit and moving it forward. And that French election coming up, I think it's on May the 7th, is going to be a really uh, big event. Uh, because, and even if it's not France, if it's Italy, if it's Greece, there are major, major problems with the euro currency, that being the second most, I guess, second largest, second uh, most heavily used currency in the world. If you factor in that currency 
may very well be going the way of the dodo bird and negative interest rates across the continent of Europe, that's a double whammy, extremely positive fundamental for physical gold ownership. And it is that physical gold ownership that eventually breaks the paper system. So we're keeping a real close eye on events in Europe in the, let's just call it the months ahead, because again, that might some of those things might actually hold the key to finally breaking the shackle hold that the paper derivatives market has on the physical price. Because that's what we're all waiting for, is that day that the paper market fails. And eh, it's probably not going to happen tomorrow, but events sure seem to still be trending that direction. Well, wonderful insights as usual, Craig. We always enjoy hearing uh, from you. And uh, before we say goodbye for today, please tell people how they can learn more about the TF Metals Report and what it is that they'll find when they visit your site. Well, they're going to find a vibrant community of people that are we all kind of here to help each other out. Uh, I provide content on a daily basis, and there's a subscription component there that's, I don't know, about $3 a week, I guess, so it's not very expensive. But there's also free content, too, and the great value comes not just from, from my input, but from the input of all the subscribers and the members who are constantly discussing the metals, the global economy, politics, everything else. Uh, finding links, providing information to everybody else. It's like a recognition that we're all in it together, like I said, in a community trying to help each other out. If anybody is listening to this and they think, hey, that sounds like me, <laughs> stop by and join us, tfmetalsreport.com. Outstanding stuff. I uh, hope you have a great weekend and look forward to speaking with you again soon, Craig. Mike, thanks so much. Uh, all the best. Well, that will do it for this week. Thanks again to Craig Hemke. The site is tfmetalsreport.com. Definitely a fantastic source for all things precious metals and a whole lot more. We urge everyone to check that out, and you'll want to check it out regularly for some of the best commentary on the metals markets that you will find anywhere. And be sure to check back here next Friday for our next weekly Market Wrap podcast. Until then, this has been Mike Leeson with Money Metals Exchange. Thanks for listening, and have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this week's Money Metals podcast. Be sure to come back next week. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast through iTunes for answers to all of your questions or to discreetly and securely buy or sell gold or silver coins, bars, and rounds. Call 1-800-800-1865 or visit www.moneymetals.com. Our knowledgeable and no-pressure specialists are standing by between 7 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. Or you can lock in your order online, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Again, visit us at www.moneymetals.com or call 1-800-800-1865.